Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will see how to configure remote GPIO on a Raspberry Pi and use its GPIO ports remotely from a Windows computer. Once we finish the setup, we will run two simple scripts which will blink an LED and drive a servo motor respectively. Now, let's go ahead and start the configuration. First thing we need to do on the Raspberry Pi is to enable remote GPIO. There are two ways of doing this. First is to use the graphical interface. Now we'll go to Preferences, Raspberry Pi Configuration, and to Interfaces, and we are going to click on Enable for Remote GPIO. Now let's see the second way to enable GPIO. The second way is to use the Raspberry config from a remote terminal. Now I'll enter the following command, sudo Raspberry config. And I will go to interfacing options and I will go to remote GPIO and I will click on yes. And now it's enabled. Now we need to start the Pi GPIO daemon by the following command. We're going to write sudo system control start Pi GPIO daemon. Let's see if it's working or not. Yes, we can see that it started one minute ago. And we want the Pi GPIO daemon to start every time the Raspberry Pi boots. So we will run the following command. Enable Pi GPIO daemon. This was all that we need to do on the Raspberry Pi. Now let's quickly configure our Windows computer. On our Windows computer in the command prompt, we are going to write the following command. It seems that we finished the configuration on both the Raspberry Pi and the Windows computer. Now we are ready to run our scripts remotely. Okay, now this is the script that I'm going to run in order to use the remote GPIO for the LED. If you would like to see the original script that we had run on the Raspberry Pi, please click on the link above. Now I would like to state the differences between that example and this one. In this one, we are importing the Pi GPIO factory with this line. And we are creating an instance of the Pi GPIO factory indicating the host which is equal to the Raspberry Pi's IP address. And the last thing that we need to update is to set the pin factor parameter to the factory instance that we just created. So let's see if the script will run properly. Let's run python led1.py. And we can see that the LED has started blinking. So you can easily understand that we can create different instances of the Pi GPIO factory, giving different host names and different names to them. And we can use different Raspberry Pi's GPIO ports in a single script. Now let's go to our second and last example, servo motor. In the second example, we are going to see how to control the servo motor via remote GPIO. If you would like to see the original example that we have given, please click on the link above. Now I'm going to give you the differences between that original file. Again, we are importing the Pi GPIO factory from gpio0.pins.pygpio. And again, we are creating an instance of the Pi GPIO factory class with the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. And the last thing that we are updating is giving the pin factory parameter to the servo class. The servo motor is going to be going to its minimum position and then sleep for two seconds, go to the maximum position, sleep for two seconds, and back to its minimum position again. So let's run the code and see how it works. Let's run it again to see it properly. Going to its minimum position, maximum position, and back to the minimum position again. 
So this was the end of the video. In this video, we saw how to configure the remote GPIO for Raspberry Pi. I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any questions, please write them to the comment section. And see you in another video. Thank you for watching. Bye.